beautiful people having this nice Tuesday actually a little bit chilly but still nice Yana Kasperzak your spiritual awakening core energy coach and my soul's purpose is to help you get your shit together so you can finally escape that mental prison that you find yourself in and live the life you love cherish and are excited to wake up to every single day and stop pushing that snooze button on yourself, on your day, and on your life. So today, to help you do just that, before we go right into where's the refresh button, uh, we go into the topic. I want to make sure that I have my video up and running, and I don't miss any comments because this device called the phone doesn't seem to always show me my comments. So that's why I want to make sure I have that ready and set up uh, to go. So today the topic that I wanted to cover is how do we feel unsafe in our lives in our, and in our bodies? And also what to do when you are triggered, when your safety is triggered. And this is not, even though this, I work with women. I know this video is not going to be just for women because men go through the same things. And, okay, so I would love to actually hear from everyone who is in here. Hi, Rebecca, how are you doing? Beautiful, nice to see you again. Um, I would love to hear from everyone who is watching, whether you're watching live or you're watching replay. You can let me know if you are watching live or watching replay and let me know what do you think causes you to feel unsafe in your life or in your body which is two and the same because your life is in your body your life is not outside your body everything outside the body it is the external world and the only world that exists is within your body so everything is happen happening on the inside. Even though when you get hurt outside, you get scratch or a cut, you're feeling it on the inside. You don't feel it on the outside or you don't feel it outside your body. You don't feel it in a different room. You feel it here. When you walk into a party or, you, or a big gathering and there's a lot of different energies and there's someone that walks in with shitty energy you feel that inside your body even though it's outside so that's why I wanted to cover this topic topic of safety and I will just mention 10 things even though there are more than 10 things and even within these 10 things they are not limited to just what I'm sharing and saying but I do want to hear from every one of you each and every one of you, especially if you are feeling uncomfortable or unsafe sharing it. And the reason for that is because you want that outside of your body. And if you don't feel safe doing that here in the video, please feel free to message me directly and we can have that conversation. Because this, like I, like I started saying, this is a conversation that I have with every woman that I work with and most women that I speak with. So the first thing that I want to cover is physical threats. So by physical threats, it means being exposed to a violent or threatening experience that can ca cause or does cause physical harm to the physical to to your body on the outside right um, and this can include assault abuse or becoming or being a victim in a crime so that's the physical threat checking your environment and the second one is emotional 
or another emotional and psychological because it's of, of the mind where your mind is under attack instead of you physically being hurt you are being mentally hurt and it stays with you right whereas physically hurt you see the physical and it it's noticeable and everyone can see it unless you cover it whereas the emotional psychological where your psyche is under attack no one can see that unless they're trained to see it and there's not that many trained people out there that can see the emotional and psychological threats or abuse and so emotional and psychological factors they're their trauma they're the abuse bullying is a big one we as adults we are not we are not what's I can't think of a word that we still get bullied that we're not immune to being bullied that we still experience bullies how many bullies do you know in your life to some of you it's still your parents or family members or some friends when you're being bullied you know you feel it your body reacts and responds you feel that fluttering you should not feel that fluttering that is your body telling you something is wrong something is off whereas you know we're taught as teenagers that's love when your heart flatters you see you have butterflies in your stomach that's love no I would question that because that might be your body screaming run for the hills that might be anxiety that might be panic it might be it's your adrenaline but it, it's your adrenaline so why is your adrenaline spiking right now is the question to ask um, and f feeling a sense of <clears throat> not feeling safe and secure in your relationship right and when I talk about a relationship I will continue to remind everyone it is not limited to those people that you are married to the intimate relationships it is any and every kind of relationship including one with your dog right if your dog has bitten you you might feel emotional triggers as well it would be a physical threat and on top of it it might be an emotional psychological one depending on how the dog has been treating you right so Rebecca says good morning good morning and hashtag live perfect topic for me yes thank you for saying that and it is a perfect topic for quite a few women especially some of the women that I've been speaking with um, as of late and it is the amount of women that have experienced It, this one will be tied into a couple of them, but the amount of women that have experienced I'm just gonna use the word touched or violated and Found a way to normalize it in their mind It is insane It is practically Almost every woman that I speak with I can maybe count the women that haven't expressed that to me yet on one hand versus everyone else um, because let's start off with there's not a not the safety measurements that are in place to protect the victim are not there and the reason why women don't open up is because they don't want to continue being victimized because most do not experience being heard seen understood validated and felt safe with the right support systems in place after so what they have learned to do is to tell themselves a different story to normalize it in the way of blaming themselves I did this it was my fault because I did this because this happened because of me because I should have done this I could have done this a lot of shame and guilt around it. and that's why most women will not talk about it 
definitely will not talk about it publicly. Okay? So, there's that. Rebecca said, being disposable. That is definitely one of the ways that we feel unsafe. When we feel like we are, what I'm hearing with being disposable is not feeling good enough that you don't believe that you are good enough, that you are so disposable and so replaceable that, you know, why bother? That you are not, you're not good enough, you're not enough, yeah, you don't deserve this, that there's someone better than you. Now, as true as it might be, how can we even measure who is better than us because they are never us you are you i am me just because i might do something in your eyes as better it does not mean it's better because i might look at you and say what you're doing is better than me better than i do but where is this line of better really what is happening in this in this experience in this moment is we're each giving an opportunity to compare ourselves right it's comparison compare writers to compare ourselves to someone else to really it's like reading a book to see what else can we do what else can we experience what else can we have who else can we become on top of who we already are we are like i said it's like reading a book every person is a walking and talking book some talk more than others but it's up to you to read that book if you want to or put that book down and say i've read enough i'm good i've learned what i need to learn and from that this is what i choose to apply into myself and into my my life and that could be values it could be quirks it could be personality traits it could be habits it could be skills it could be anything that you learn from that book that you read so when it comes to feeling inadequate and feeling like you're disposable why why are you feeling that way what is causing you what is the trigger that is causing you to feel in such way who are you comparing yourself to? Because you can't compare yourself to other people. And this is where I'm hoping that the uh, the connection start to make sense. You can't compare yourself to other people because you can only compare yourself to yourself, to your previous version of yourself from yesterday, from the day before yesterday, from a year ago, from 5, 10, 20 years ago. You can compare yourself just to yourself, but everybody else is there to remind you of your path, of your journey, of what you are trying to do and accomplish. Because one day you read this book called called Yana, as an example, and you decided, I like this and I want to be more this way. But you did nothing about it. You just became aware of something that you want, but you didn't take any actions. You didn't put a plan together of how you will get there. And didn't take any actions didn't start you just became aware of oh this is a great book i'd love to read it one day and then become that way and then nothing happens and then rebecca says uh just had a major aha moment i am afraid of being disposable so my uh tend treads others that way so my tendencies treat others that way Interesting. That's a very, very interesting realization that neural pathway that was connected for you. Now, having this newfound connection, this new profound realization, what are you going to do with it going forward? Just like I finished saying, you became aware of this book, great book. I want to read it, you know, in a human version or in the actual book version. I mean, that's the aha moment. But what are you going to do with this aha moment? What is the plan of execution going forward? Um, hi, Marlena. She says, just hopped on on GM Friends. 
GM friends. I'm not sure what GM friends is. GM is makes me think of, you know, GM trucks. <laughs> or maybe it's good morning. Maybe that's what it is. Uh, I know it's called, um, I guess, abbreviations, like short form words. Okay, so the next one I wanted to cover, number three. So the first one we recovered was physical threats and how that is. The second one is emotional and psychological threats. The third one is lack of control. When you feel like you have no control of a situation or an experience or of um, the space and the environment that you are in, where you currently are, where you feel like you have no control and it leaves you feeling vulnerable, it leaves you feeling open and exposed. Um, and this is where, um, so it says, it could be from personal circumstances, relationship, or external factors as well. When you feel like you're, you don't have control, or there's a lack of control. It could also be even with your kids. This one is a huge one for us moms. Merlina said, uh, good morning. Yeah, that was a good guess. GM and good morning, friends. I love it. <laughs> um, and Merlina says, I feel invisible, unheard, so I block others. Yeah, this one is huge for, I feel like, for majority of human race because of the upbringing. Most of us have experienced where we, we struggle to communicate because we're young. We don't know how to talk, how to speak properly. And our mentors in our life, our parents, you know, all the adults who are older than us, even the older friends, they wouldn't give us the time of the day to hear us out, to give us that stage to express ourselves. So they tell us to, you know, maybe later or not right now, or I, I don't understand, I don't want to hear you, all these different ways that cause us to feel invisible or if you're coming up to your mom or your dad especially in this day and age with the technology being where it is you being on the phone and your child being around and they start talking to you and you're still looking at that screen they feel invisible they feel unheard, they feel unvalidated, they don't feel loved because all they see is you giving all the attention to this device, to this phone. And there was a really powerful video I watched on Instagram where it was split into two screens. One screen, you see it's father and daughter. You see the father on his device. And then the daughter comes into the room. She must be about three years old. And then the other screen is the daughter comes into the room. He doesn't have a phone. So one, he has a phone. The other one, she doesn't. So when she comes into the room, when he has the phone, she's not looking at him. She's looking at the phone and she's going towards the phone and wants to see what's happening there. That's more interesting. And then where he doesn't have the phone, she comes in and she runs to him and embraces him. And then are bonding and connecting sitting at the table she's playing and making you no know, puzzle and doing things and he's on his phone there's no help there's no guidance she feels unheard she feels invisible she feels a lot and i know um marlin says oh my god um, i'm guilty of this i must change this me too and that's why i'm bringing this up our parents did the same without the devices they did the same things with other devices. Now we have an excuse. We have this device, which also means that we can put that down. And instead of looking here, we can look right here and in their faces and take note of their face and remember their features because our mind will forget. So why not spend the time bonding and connecting with a human being instead of a device? So, um, and then Marlena said, I don't feel safe when no control. Yeah. 
we're not supposed to feel safe when things are out of control. We're supposed to feel unsafe. And the purpose of feeling unsafe when things are out of control is so that way we can learn and understand what is causing us to feel the, that lack of control and better yet, what is the solution? Because the problem is hard to see and uncover the problem. That's the hardest part. But the solution, that's the easiest part. So the next one, number four, is unsafe environments. When you are living in an environment that is unsafe, being exposed. Right now, the one environment that I feel like a lot of people feel unsafe when it comes to you know their living situation is that there are so many people here in Canada, in Ontario. I can only speak about where I live. I can't speak for the rest of the world because I'm not there a lot of people have lost everything and it is getting so cold outside and they're living in tent communities with intents with their families because there is nothing else that's available to them everything else is full all the places where they could go and have that environment that they're living in safe. Now imagine what kind of stories and traumas would be added on top of the life that they have already experienced. That's a lot to deal with for anyone. And then to take the time to heal that experience or Perhaps there are people who are able to, that they have done enough work on themselves that no matter what happens in their life, they're unshaken. So meaning that you too can get there. You can get to that point in your life, in your existence, where if you are shook, which you, you will be, we're all human beings, we all have feelings and emotions, we all have traumas, we all have baggage that we carry. But when you are shook, it's really the difference is how long you stay there versus how long you live there. Because, and it is a choice. For most, starting off, for, for everyone, it's an unconscious choice because it's based on the program. And your default responses and your default reactions and your default thoughts and your default attitudes and how you perceive things. And then that can be changed and shifted where you are no longer living in the that space, that emotional space, but you are just experiencing it for the period of time that you need to until you have learned when you needed to learn from it going forward. Um, now, with unsafe environment, it's um, living in or being exposed to environments that are perceived as dangerous, unstable, can contribute to feeling of insecurity. This could include high climate areas, unstable political situations, wink, wink, <laughs> or even unsafe workplaces as well. Now, the next one is the one that many people understand. I feel like actually everyone understands. And that is when it comes to our health. The one most important thing that we each have and we don't understand how important it is until it is at risk. Our health, our wellness, our physical health is connected to our mental health and the moment that we each start to dig deeper and understand the connection between mental and physical health or bodies the closer you will get to healing them and being in in the spaces that you actually want you know physically mentally and emotionally so um, with physical health issues or chronic illnesses can make individuals feel vulnerable, unsafe in their bodies. 
feel also a lack of control, feeling like you're not in control of your body, not in control of your mind. I lived quite a few years, I feel like I lived most of my life feeling like I was not in control of my mind. And there are times when I still feel like I'm not in control of my mind, but those are opportunities for me to gain control of my mind in those experiences. It's like a book, right? Reading a book. I am a book. I got to learn how to read myself. You are a book. You got to learn how to read yourself. Your feelings, your emotions, your triggers are flags. When you feel something, that's your body saying, Ooh, pause and pay attention. Only you can figure out what that is because that is you are the book that you have written yourself. Whether you remember what you wrote or not, it's up to you to go into that book, start opening page by page, wherever you are being called to open that book and start work there in that area. Um, now with health, it's also fear of illness. If you fear something, if you worry about something, means that you're spending a lot of time, a lot of energy thinking about it, and you will have it. That's the power of manifestation. We don't just manifest good things. We manifest all the bad things. And we're really, really good at manifesting the bad things, which means that we are amazing at manifesting the good things. It just takes a simple it is simple. It just feels hard. A simple shift from thinking and worrying about the illnesses and then shifting to worrying about the, how much health that you have, that you have so much energy, so much vitality, that you don't know what to do with it, that you can't sit still, that you need to go for a run for a jog. That's the quantum jump that we each can do. And then the more you shift to there, and if you can't, if you still, you, you can't lie to yourself. You can't lie to yourself. You know that when you lie to yourself, it feels sickening. So instead of saying, I am full of energy, I am feeling amazing, start with, I could feel more energized. I could feel more clear mind. I, can't, I could feel, just start with, I could. And then before you know it, your coulds turn into I ams naturally seamlessly where you will become the I am program because you are already the I am program when you're thinking and worrying about you being ill or staying ill and not getting healthier you will stay there and you'll just make it worse and worse and worse it's poison it's catabolic energy catabolic energy is like cannibal it destroys it eats at you and when you consume it it will eat away not only at your body but also at your spirit and your soul and your aura and your energy and people will feel that they know that and they will some will feel magnetized towards it because we're all looking for people that we feel an energetic connection with as well so because they are allowing us to replay the stories that we have so miserable people will will migrate and feel magnetized towards miserable people and because it allows them to live comfortably not so much safely in in the in their story those people who are happy and joyful and cheery will be around those same people if you look in when you, when you went to school you saw groups of people they were all alike Right now, in your friend circle, most of you are alike. There's some going to be that are the odd ones in there. You know, the, the good or the bad. doesn't matter. There's still the odd ones in that group. And they soon will find their own way. Or the group will, will adjust. Because we do become the average of the five people we spend most of our time with. So if you're not liking who you are today not loving who you are today then look at the five people you're spending most of your time with and they will show you your future now i'm really this uh omg because of fires cusa should help 
I mean, we help everyone, and you're right, next to us. Um, a lot of us feel like you're part of us. Yeah, we, the States and Canada, we are practically one, even though our metric systems aren't. <laughs> <laughs> we're just chuckling about it at the sacred circle today and it's not actually because of fires it's because of the person who is in power the prices everything like it is unaffordable so that's why there's a lot of financial struggle in canada and ontario Ontario is the most expensive province to live in in Canada. FYI, for those of you who didn't know. Yeah, the highest cost of living in Ontario. And it's become even higher than any previous years. So, now we talked about health concerns. That was number five. Number six is relationships. Now, relationships, physical health issues, or no, that's, that's the wrong one. Um, unhealthy relationships, whether familiar, romantic, or social, can contribute to feeling of unsafety. This may include emotional abuse, manipulation, or toxic dynamics. Just like I was talking about, this is some, some relationships we feel like we have no choice but to be in those relationships. But I would ask you a question. If you knew that you had one year to live, would you still choose to stay in that relationship? Now, again, I'm not just referring to relationship as the intimate relationship, the one that you are married to, but friendship, family, or even that dog that might be a vicious dog would you choose to stay in that relationship why or why not because when we pause and we start really evaluating our relationships when it comes to the limited time that we have on this planet that there's, we just keep those that we value. And all the other ones can be set free. But if you, the answer is yes, you would stay there. Why, or, why would you stay there? Understanding why is very important. Or why not? Why wouldn't you stay there? Because if we, we can sit here and we can think that we have... For me, I'm 37 years old. I might think I have another 30, maybe 100 years, right? <laughs> I don't know if I want to live that long, but uh, or I could live that long. But let's say I have another 60 years. I'm live to 90, 97. But realistically, my 37 years, I don't feel like I lived 37 years. Because it is like a blink of an eye. The rest of our life is the same. It would feel the same. As we're going through it, not so much so. But as we look back, it's like that. It's gone. So why do we spend our energy on the things that we don't want to spend on, that we don't enjoy, that don't bring us joy. Why? And it doesn't mean that that's it, it's over, I'm going to move on. It just means understanding why it's important to you. If you are in a relationship and right now it's not as good as you would want it to be, what could you do? Because in understanding the why, you get to understand what can you do differently. Just like Merlina mentioned with the phone becoming aware of the why you want to change the relationship what can you add to this relationship to better it for yourself because you're not just looking to better the relationship for other people you want to make sure it's better for you 
And what's better for you is going to be better for the other person. 99% out of the time, 99% out of 100, it will be better for both. Um, so thinking of it that way. And, uh, and then Rebecca said, wow, powerful question. Thank you. I like to ask these really like so cool um quivering kind of questions that really just trigger our our soul i feel like to help us to choose better and to recognize that there is a choice and the choice is ours and ours alone no one else's um And then Rebecca says, I think most of the people in my life are yes. That is a great start. It really is. And I'm glad to hear that most of the people in your life are yes. And those that are hmm, not so sure, sit with it. Work through it. See what's in it for you. And if there's nothing there for you, there's no more value, then just like when you're cleaning out your physical spaces in your house, if this object... If this object had no longer value in my house, I would either give it to someone else or put it in the garbage. Now with humans, we can't put them in the garbage. I hope you don't, but you can release them because there's somebody else that is waiting for them, that is looking for them, that is needing them, and they're gonna be their person. Again, any kind of relationship, not just a romantic one. And then uh, Rebecca said, um, oh, Marlena said, programming on what they drill in our heads growing up. Yeah. Yeah. That one, that is our default tendencies. That is who we are being and not who we are. Who we're being is that program that we each have by the age of seven years old when we are that program. And then everything else is just, that's when the child starts to wake up and starts trying to figure out themselves. The ego is becoming more awake, the awareness of the self, the I is present, and they start to figure out, who am I? Who am I? And that is all based on that program that they receive. And that's why when we start to uncover who we are, we start to recognize that is not who we are. That is that program that we didn't ask for. We weren't even there for it. My favorite, favorite quote. I don't know who it's from, but it's based on um, a tribe saying to the modern men, give me your child for the first seven years of their life and I will show you the man. When I heard that, and every time I think I'm like, Ooh, like, I get chills because I really deeply understand the power of this truth, of this universal truth, of the programming of the seven years that we receive in this modern world versus nature. That's how I would explain it. And then Rebecca says, I was recently thinking about this topic, my age and reflection on my age, seeing my life for what it really is at my age at this point in my life. Yeah. And the choices that you have in front of you of what you can do and what you don't have to do. The problems that we have in our life are the problems that we came up with in our mind. That that is why the problem is the hardest part to deal with, but the solution is simple. Solution is easy. Sometimes it might be, hmm, I don't want that problem anymore because I created it, I came up with it because my mind is so creative, so I don't want that anymore. So let me go find a different problem that is more fun and more entertaining for me to, to deal with, to go through. Um, and Rebecca says, I think most people in my life are, yes, okay, that one I read. Um, oh yeah, it's, it went down and uh, Marlena said it's hard to leave people 1000% I grew up with nobody so I don't like giving up on people but learning it's um, 
but learning it's not my job to save them 100 percent. i must save myself i feel like i'm waking up for many days yeah that is a very powerful realization and a painful past story where you grow up with nobody like i can i feel like a lot of people can relate in a way where even when we're growing up with our families but they're not there for us right whether it's with the screen whether it's they're busy at work is that they're just come and go just to feed us and take care of us and we then are left alone whereas back to the quote give me a child i'll show you the man they're not alone they have a tribe they have a community they have support fortress that helps them with anything and everything that they need they each child would have someone they could go to based or dependent on the problem that they have or what they're dealing with what they're going through Right? If you needed to get to the next level of your consciousness, raise your consciousness, you would go to a shaman right, or a shaw woman. If you had relationship troubles, they would go to the relationship expert. And in this day and age, we have access to all those different experts. An expert is someone who is just a couple of steps ahead of you. They're not so far ahead that you can't even see yourself there, that they're just far enough that you could see yourself there. That's who an expert is. Another way to describe it is grade five is an expert to grade three, or even an expert to grade four. But a grade 12 is not an expert to grade five, or even to perhaps even grade eight. That would be too far ahead. So that's how it is. And it is it is really painful mentally and physically to let go of people, to release them, but it's temporary. And for me, what has helped me, because I had to do that throughout my life many times, um, and it doesn't necessarily get easier, but the part that does get easier is that healing where you don't know you would no longer need a year to heal from releasing someone you could just take a day or two or maybe a week and you are back to your self and you would notice my you would notice yourself feeling lighter like you just went to the bathroom like you know a like cat goes to the bathroom and then they feel so much lighter and they just run and they have the zoomies you would feel that way the zoomies part that you would feel is that that release of catabolic energy that was attached to that person or that relationship, energy vampire perhaps, and that you have that back for yourself now. Um, and then uh, Rebecca says, so you speaking as an expert, like a mentor or a role model? Yes. Someone that you would look up to, someone that you would follow, someone that you would learn from, someone that has been there done that and you could follow their path and of course you're going to be making it your own but you're still fight, uh, following that path doing what they did to help you right a grade four or grade three they're going to be following the path to get to grade five and if they want to get there faster they can take they can spend more time with a grade five hand in hand walking and learning and learning um, becomes so much easier and, and smoother because you have that guide that is taking you from point A to point Z, to point Z, depending what country you're in. Because, you know, even though we're neighbors and we have that border separating us, our alphabet ends with different ways. Uh, Z or Z. I think Z is the American and Z is the Canadian pronunciation of Z. Um, so the next one, number seven, is social and cultural factors. Discrimination, prejudice, and social inequity can make certain individuals or groups feel unsafe due to potential uh, uh, for harm or biases based on their identity or based on their choice, based on their viewpoints, based on their perceptions. And we're living in everyone nowadays 
seems like they're very sensitive and that this whole I'm not going to surround myself with people that don't think exactly like me is a wrong way to live because you are just cutting yourself off from so many opportunities for growth, development, and learning. It's important for all of us to surround ourselves with different types of people from different walks of life, different personalities, different experiences, because we get to learn from them as they are a walking and talking book. And who we are screams so loud that we cannot see it or hear it. Others can, but we can't. Um, now, we went to social and cultural factors. Number eight, past trauma. I feel like that one is pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory, but I'm going to read it regardless. Individuals who have experienced trauma in the past, such as childhood abuse or traumatic event, may carry a heightened sense of vulnerability and they become more sensitive, more open and prone to other others coming in and doing and adding to it. And also experiencing, because the lenses and the way that that individual would see the world is through the lens of trauma, through the lens of pain. And when we look through that lens, we see that more. And then that lens in a way is also like a, magnif a magnifying glass that what we think about, what consumes our mind, it, it becomes that way. So if we are so focused on our past traumas that we can't see past them and we can't heal through them, then our external environment will validate that experience for us in, in many different ways. So that is why it's, it is vitally important to go within, open that Pandora's box that you have locked away and start healing what you are ready to heal. You're not gonna go for the most painful experience unless it is exactly what's coming up for you, but you cannot expect yourself to be healed from any kind of trauma in one in one sitting with yourself. It's, it, it's like another way to describe it, uh, the word in, insanity comes to mind, that it would be insane for us to, let's say, when it comes to weight reduction, to see a video and say, I've watched it, now I get it, I'm going to be that way and I'm going to be perfect, this is now my body. Now you just watched it, you just understood it. Maybe you did the exercise once, but how many times do you need to do that exercise to get to that point? As many times as you need to. That's the answer. And you keep working at it, keep working at it, keep working at it, because you are that sculpture. And you're just trying to chip away at this trauma to see yourself, to see who you are underneath that trauma because you are not that trauma you are underneath it and you need to chip away at it little by little every single day until you see yourself perhaps for the first time ever so the number nine is financial security i already touched up on that point earlier but with everything being so expensive and the pay is not being increased for most people it is unquestionable why people would be so financially triggered now on top of it we talk about programming and the money story the programs that we receive when it comes to money plays a major role and just because you receive the programming by the age of seven does not mean you don't receive more of the programming as you grow up. You still do. You still get programmed even more on top. That is just the default program by the age of seven. That's just the basics. It's like talking, walking, breathing, screaming, crying, 
you know, go in bathroom, all of those things. That's just the basic program and everything else just adds on top of that program. Now, you can also add good things to that program or you can rewrite the program. And the money stories is one of the most deeply rooted stories. I feel like um, right now might be a good, um, I guess, story to add to the programming to help you each understand what the, what the program does. You've you've probably heard this one before when it comes to fleas. That the fleas, um, the elephants as well, they get trained. Elephants and fleas were at first with the elephant you start with a really strong chain you attach it to a tree or a post and the elephant fairly quickly will learn that it can't it can't escape so it won't even try fleas the same thing you put a lid on top of the fleas and they will jump and jump and then once they learn that they can't jump out that they're locked in there they're trapped they won't even attempt to jump anymore that's it they're done now what happens is that they pass that all of that on to the next generation and the next generation and the next generation and the next generation we humans are like a bunch of fleas in that jar with the lid closed on us called the solar system around us, right? The sky, which we, we all know that there's so much more beyond the sky, beyond what we see. We just don't see it. So part of us doesn't believe it's actually there, even though we believe it's there, but we don't know it's actually there until we go there and see it. How many of us do get to see it? So now, unlike the fleas, we humans can rewrite our history and it takes one generation to heal, to change that programming, like the full generation to fully start from, from scratch to the end of the healing and not passing on these unhealthy catabolic programs and stories. So that's where you start, you start with your stories, your perceptions, your mindset, who you are, who you're being, who you're not being, all of that is stories. Everything is a story. That's why I keep saying that we are a book, walking, talking book. We're full of stories, lots of stories. Um, and then Marlena says, uh, it's what happened to you, not who you are. Exactly. It just, what happened, and the word just doesn't, doesn't really fit in there, but it feels like it is part of the programming as well that talking about this you know just do it mm. in order for us to get to the just we need to do some work so we can see it it was just an experience it's just what happened to us but it happened this is what happened this was the experience and the mind and the body were conditioned to it and they there was a story happening in the mind and now the body you know you felt felt a certain way and then when you feel something for long enough it becomes an emotion an emotion is the body where you feel it in your body when your body speaks to you through your emotions or through your feeling which is triggered and we we would call that a feeling or we would call that an emotional response so uh, with the financial um, economic in uh, instability or financial security can lead to feelings of insecurity worries and fear about one's future because the future is we're basing the future and this is where anxiety actually comes from the future is based on our past and that's why anxiety is there it is causing us to feel unsafe and um, insecure in our future because we're basing it on our past experiences and we just can't see past where we are right now um, <clears throat> and then number 10 the last one is social media influence or media influence I call it social media because everybody's being social but it's the media itself whether it's the news, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Instagram, you're getting some feedback. You're, you're learning from that. And constant exposure to news 
especially highlighting negative events and we know the news is incredible for that because that's what the news does the news just focuses on the negative events it is two minutes of fear which has now become much more longer than two minutes of fear of pumping fear into everyone they possibly can because that's how you're controlled you, you cannot control someone who is awakened confident and comfortable and knows who they are you can't own them and if you can't own someone or something you can't control it because they are their own being they're the own entity and they know it and you can't take that away from them but those that have fear are easily controlled and manipulated and the media has done an incredible job of doing all of those constant like i said constant exposure to news especially highlighting negative events can contribute to a general sense of fear and unsafety even if the individual is not directly affected now on top of it, you become what you expose yourself to. So if you're exposing yourself to fearful and scary events, you are that is gonna be the program that's gonna be running in the back of your mind. You're gonna be thinking about it, you're gonna be worrying about it. You're going to be that fear and worry that is taking life away from you, taking your years away from you. And that is all. I wanted to share when it comes to what was it up again feeling unsafe in our lives and our bodies and everything has a compounding effect everything adds one on top of the other on top of the other on top of the other and it just builds and builds and builds and builds the stuff that you're not dealing with that's in your Pandora's box you added more things to that story to reaffirm that that is the truth, that that is the reality, that that's how things work. Those people who asked someone out that they wanted to date and they got rejected once, twice, three times, four times, how likely are they going to be to try it again for the fifth, for the seventh, for the tenth time? Not much likely. They're going to experience a lot of anxiety because it is based on the past. And that's why it's difficult to see the future because it is based on the past stories and experiences and the anxiety gets triggered. Uh, fear is anxiety. And anxiety, the reason why it gets triggered and because it's struggle to see the future with it is because anxiety is unhealed trauma. And if we can't get through the trauma, how can we get through to the next day and into our future without this trauma? So it's important or unhealed grief, right? Another way of calling it is that you grieved something. You went through something difficult and challenging. And now you're trying to see a bright blue, white sky kind of future where everywhere you look in the past it was dark and gloomy you totally see if you haven't been able to deal with the past so that's where we start we start in the now but in the now the past is coming back so when the past come comes back to us and it is now in our conscious awareness in the now that is the opportunity for us to do the work and if we ignore it then it becomes a missed opportunity and it compounds and it compounds those things that are in a pandora's box the traumas the grief the pain and the suffering you went through each and every one of them is a version of you that lonely scared terrified child that did not know what to do with it so she hid herself away to deal with later or never so of course it's going to hurt because you neglected yourself when you needed to pay attention to yourself because that's what you watch and observe from everyone else around you 
Just forget it. Just move on. Don't deal with it now. Cry about it later. Why? If you're being called now, why later? If you have a serious, if you broke your arm, you're not going to put it off to do later. You're going to go to the hospital and deal with it right now. The things that are coming up for you, they're meant to come up for you right now. What you're being triggered or triggered with, they're meant for you to be dealing with right now. Because now is the time. Not when you're not aware of them consciously. Because why? You're feeling great. Why would you bring that up? It's going to naturally come up for you when you are ready to deal with it. Just like when you're asking for more patience, you're not going to be given more patience. You're going to be given opportunities to practice patience in every possible scenario for you. So you can be patience. But you don't get to practice it when things are going great. Because things are going great. Why? So that is what I'm going to leave you all with to think and ponder on. And I would love to hear after listening and watching to this entire video. What is your biggest takeaway for you today? That's question number one. Your biggest takeaway. What was your biggest realization? What was the, oh, wow, this is, this is great. This is what I needed. And then the second question is, what are you going to do with it today? What are you going to do with it today? Because I know you don't want to put this off until tomorrow. Because tomorrow is not promised. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Nor will we want to know. Because it will be boring knowing exactly what's going to happen. So what are you going to do with it today? And then maybe the day after and the day after. So that is all that I have for you guys for today. Thank you very much for listening, for tuning in. I would hope and hope and invite you to watch our Heal the Unicorn podcast tomorrow in the Heal the Unicorn Spiritual Awakening for Women Facebook group where Bethany and I go live. I will quickly pull up the topic before my phone dies. Uh, it's going to be the November 15th. Um, the sacred art of paying attention. That's going to be the topic for tomorrow. And it will be at 1.30 Eastern time live in our Facebook group. Heal the Unicorn Spiritual Awakening for Women. So if you're not in there, please uh, make sure you go and join. So that, so that way we approve you and you are able to watch the, the podcast. And um, invite your friends. Invite your friends to the group. And it's so much funner with with people that you enjoy spending time with, that you refer to as friends. Other than that, until I see you guys at the next event, which is hopefully tomorrow or next Tuesday for another story time with Yana, with myself. And until then, bye everybody. Thanks for being on here with me, ladies. Bye.